Welcome back everyone to the Code Long series on creating a chat application. So far when it comes to showing a user a notification like registered successfully or please log in before accessing this page, we have not been doing much with the way these notifications appear. In this video, we will improve upon this design using Flask's built-in message flashing system. This flashing system basically allows us to create a notification at the end of a request and pass on the message text to the next request. And this message will be accessible only once by the next request. It's actually easier when you see it in action. To start with, let's import flash. So how do we generate a message in this flashing system? Let's go to the register user route and see how it's done. This is where we check whether there were any validation errors. We hash the password here. And here we add the username and password to the database. Before we redirect the user to the login route, let's flash a notification to the user confirming that the username registration was successful. The syntax is super straightforward. Flash and inside the brackets in quotes, the message registered successfully. Please log in. When the login page is rendered, this message text will be passed on to the login page. Before we see how, there's one more thing we can do with message flashing. Aside from the message text, we can also add a category to the message. What's a category, you ask? Category is an optional parameter we can add, and this parameter can be used in different ways. For example, we can use CSS to style messages of certain categories in a specific way. Notification that are tagged with a category of success, for example, can appear in green, while notifications with a category name failed can appear in red. Or instead of CSS, we can also use conditional statements in Jinja to treat certain categories in a different way. We will see how to use categories in a minute. For now, we will add the optional category parameter and let's call this category success. By the way, we can give our category any name we want. There is no restriction here. The only reason why I used the category name success here because it matches a bootstrap class that I will be using for CSS. If this sounds confusing, just hang in there. It will be clear when you see how it's used. Okay, let's use message flashing in a few more routes. This right here is trying to see if a user is trying to access a protected page without logging in. So we can flash an error message here. The syntax is the same as earlier. Flash, then the message. We'll also add the optional category parameter. Since this is more of an error message, let's call it danger. Once again, the category could have been called anything at all. The only reason I called it danger is because it matches a bootstrap class that I want to use. Okay, if you're using message flashing, then there is no need to return a duplicate message. Since we are asking the user to log in, we can redirect the user to the login route directly. I'm going to use redirect and URL for. We have seen the syntax earlier. Great. Let's use message flashing in one more place. Here where the user is logging out, let's use message flashing. You have logged out successfully. And since this is a successful logout, let's give this the category success. If you are already flashing a confirmation message, then we don't need to return a duplicate message. So let's just copy what we did here and redirect the user to the login route. To see the messages in action, we need to add them to the HTML template. All the HTML files are stored inside the folder called templates. Rather than write the code to display the message separately for registration page, login page, chat page, etc., Let's just add it to the layout template directly. This was the pre-login layout page. If you recollect, this block content right here is where individual pages will display their content. So we will write the code to display message flashing above this. Any page which inherits this template will have the code already for message flashing. The syntax is very familiar Jinja syntax format with messages get flashed messages we'll close the loop 
Now what this does is it populates the variable messages with a list of tuple of all messages that are flashed. We had also passed in the optional category parameter. The way to access the category name is to set with categories to true. Not every instance of a page being rendered will have messages to display. So first, let's make sure that the messages variable is not empty. We'll use a if statement and we'll close the if statement. I had mentioned earlier that this returns a list and each element of the list will be a tuple and it's going to look something like this. Each element of the list will be a tuple and the first element of a tuple is going to be category followed by message. So this is the name of the category and this is the message text. So I'm just going to leave that there for a minute. If I want to display the message text, then we would use the Jinja syntax. Now, if I want to display the message text, then we would access the messages list. And remember, in Python and Jinja, it's a zero-based index. We'll access the first element in the list. That's the first tuple. And within this tuple, to display the message text, do you want to access the second element? So that's one. So this will display the message text. Okay, let me also show you how to access uh, category value. We again are trying to access the first element of the list, the first tuple. And within this tuple, we want the category name. So that's going to be the first element. It's a zero based index, so it's going to be zero. Okay, we can get rid of this. So let's go to the terminal. I'm inside the folder that we created for this application. And I have activated the virtual environment. Let's start the server. Let's copy the URL and paste it in the browser. Let's register a user. I'm going to call it user8 and the password is could be anything. Let's call it test. Same with confirmation password, create. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to this page and let's go to the registration route. So after the user has been added to the database, we flashed a message, registered successfully, please log in. And we also passed in a category called success. So that's what we see right here. And then the user was redirected to the login route. And that is the whole page. Okay, now next let's refresh the page and see if the message will persist. No, we don't see the message anymore. Because the way the flashing system works is that it sends the message only once and only to the next request. When we reload the page, it's yet another request and the message will not appear. Now let's try and log off a user. The way we had implemented the route to log off a user, we just visit the logout page. There you go. You can see the category and you can see the message. There's a typo in the message. It's immaterial, but I'll just correct it. So if you see here, this was on the logout route. This was the message that we had flashed, and this was the category. So that is what you see over here. Finally, let's try to visit the chat page. We get the error message, and we are redirected to the login page itself. Now the last thing we want to see is to log in and then visit the chat page. So let's do that. So once we are logged in, we are able to access the chat page directly and there is no message which is being flashed. So everything seems to be working fine. Let's commit the changes. We'll stop the server. So we have modified two files. Let's add and commit both the files. Add message flashing. In the next video, we'll start work on the core of our chat application. First, we will introduce the concept of polling, web sockets, and socket IO. Then, in the subsequent video, we will write the code for the chat application. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. See you in the next video.